Welcome to the 24th episode of the Birkin Pictures podcast slash YouTube show, where we talk about the top three things in pop culture you may have missed this week. There could potentially be some spoilers for your favorite movies, TV shows, video games, and or comics. You have been <laughs> warned, you whippersnappers, this is The FOMO Show. Wow. <laughs> All right. Way to keep it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, our names. What are our names? I'm so, Quinn. And I'm Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so once again, we'd like to thanks for, thank you, say thanks. thanks. So once again, we'd like to say thank you for joining us on YouTube or podcast and hello to all our new watchers and or listeners in the States and internationally and beyond and wherever space is something. Hi, aliens. And, <laughs> area 51. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you want to keep the conversation going, uh, you can, of course, support the show. You can uh, comment below. You can find all that all the information in the episode notes on the website or on the website at www.broken.picturesno.com. And uh, you can also leave us, leave us a voice message at, uh, we'll play it on the show maybe. Uh, go to <laughs> www.anchor.fm slash the FOMO show to talk to us. And, uh, you know, if writing comments isn't your thing, you know, you can just, just talk to us and like a normal person, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, normal is debatable. Super debatable. <laughs> <laughs> and overrated. Uh, so, YouTube viewers, please like and subscribe. Hit the little bell icon for new... Ding. <laughs> new oh. notifications. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't wait for you, my man. Uh, podcast listeners, please leave five stars in your podcast app. Help other people find us. We'd appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. So, uh, same thing going on. Uh, we're, we're taking a little poll. We're just trying to figure out... Uh, should we go live? We're looking at uh, going live right now. We're leaning into going live where we think so. But I mean, if you've got some arguments why we shouldn't or whatever, uh, we'd love to hear them. Uh, right now, it's just a matter of getting the equipment together. So, I mean, if you, you want to support the show or donate, we'd appreciate that. That would help us expedite the process. Uh, but otherwise, it, that's what it's going to be hanging on, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, because the FOMO show just isn't this radical money maker. If you didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> so not, not the it's not yeah, one. we'll get there <laughs> one day. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what are you guys into this week? What are you watching, playing, reading, whatever? Um, let us know if we should miss it or don't miss it. Is it good? Is it is, or is it not good? So, what about you, Quinn? I am good. I'm watching Good Omens. Yeah, on uh, Amazon Prime. TV, whatever their things called, Amazon. Yeah, the thing where you can watch the videos where Amazon and you get Prime and you get your packages in two days, but they also give you stuff to watch. That. Yeah, and then there's stuff that you can't watch. Yeah. Unless you buy unlimited. Unless you weird. buy unlimited, because weird. Amazon just wants all our money. Yeah, the tears are weird. <laughs> um. Well, what was it? Yeah, Good Omens. It's you know story about the end of the world, but it's more of a story about an angel and a demon and they're like best friends and it's a really sweet story and they've been friends since like the beginning of time wow. i'm only like episode three it's interesting yeah but it's i mean they used to live in heaven together right until the the fall kind of they're third of, like third of the angels is this a different it's kind of, their interpretation of it is a little different because okay. like they were both in eden and Crowley, Crowley was what he used to be called, but he changed his name to Crowley. Uh, he was the snake that told Eve to eat the apple, and they Ooh. got them kicked out. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, so, you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really sweet, and it's like if if you're a fan of like British comedies already, like go ahead and watch it. Uh, but if not, expect some points in time where you're like. What is going on, and why do I feel like I'm just watching a TV show with the Beatles? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, but yeah, don't miss it. I think it's really good. I enjoy it. So, yeah. 
We'll, we'll Very, watch cool. It. Very cool. Uh, of course, we're still watching the OA uh, season two. Uh, just scheduling, it's hard. It's hard for us to binge anything unless we plan it, like we did with Stranger Things. Uh, let's see. What did, I cannot remember what we'd watch for pizza movie night. Uh, I posted it, <laughs> so it's out there. If you want to look, oh, look me up on Facebook, a never ending story. Yes, yes, that's what it was. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I even just mentioned Stranger Things three. Yeah. That, that's I couldn't stop thinking about it since then. So, yeah, that's good. Well, yeah, I love that movie, and yeah, it it it's been a while since my kids saw it, and they didn't really remember some of it, and. To them, it did not hold up at all. <laughs> it was hard. Like, like they're in the the swamp of sadness, and uh, of course, Artex, and you know, and they're just like my youngest daughter, who's eleven, just starts giggling, and I'm like, well, "How dare you?" He's like, "This is the swamp of sadness. Like, this is this is this is like the most emotional part of the movie." They they apparently they have issues because anytime it gets quiet during a movie. Or there's like a serious part, somebody's got to get up and go do something. Like they can't just sit through it. It's too uncomfortable, too awkward for them. It's weird. Oh, I remember the first time I watched that movie. I didn't know what I was watching. I stumbled upon it as I did a lot of things as a child uh, by accident. <laughs> you know, I was watching it and I got you know, got to the part of the swamp of sadness, and I was just like really distraught. And I was like. I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. This is a never-ending story. This means this movie's never going to end. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't do more of this. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. The first time I watched it, I remember I was like first or second grade, maybe. And it was like, we're in the classroom, and they rolled the TV in, and I was just like, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. Like, I am this kid. I am all those kids, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm a Treyu. I am Sebastian. I'm, I am this movie. I love this movie. <laughs> and that was like my journey, my entry into nerdom. As far as I remember going back into like fantasy type stuff. Of course, that one has like every trope imaginable. Just like, it's like a collage of everything. I mean, yeah, even I like think. native American stuff is like, I don't even know if that kid is, is it Native American or not? <laughs> it's like, at first, I couldn't even tell if he was a boy or not. <laughs> some, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, weird feelings days. for a first grader. <laughs> it's like, am I, am I attracted to a train? I don't know. <laughs> He's cute. She? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know what's going on anymore. <laughs> confused right now. I shouldn't be having these feelings at this age. <laughs> Anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else have struggles with a tray when they were young? <laughs> That's not why I like the movie, but <laughs> it's still a great movie. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Don't miss it. <laughs> don't miss the never-ending story, and don't miss Stranger Things, who gives an, an awesome uh, tribute to the never-ending story. Yep. So. Right, so on to the number one movie of the week. And the number one movie of the week still is Spider-Man Far From Home. And it looks like, yeah, everything's still fine on Rotten Tomatoes. It's it's second week? Second week. Second week. Second week. Congrats, mm -hmm. Spider-Man. You did it. You beat Toy Story. Yeah. But can you beat Lion King? We'll see. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. I still have not seen Spider-Man 2. Uh, far from home so please stop spoiling crap online <laughs> like i know every twist and turn of the movie just from seeing freaking headlines on youtube and photos like how long this and that it's like is so and so alive it's like stop <laughs> stop like you can be vague with your headlines and say spoilers stop being a troll stop trolling folks and just trying to get likes and thumbs up just by being it's about that clickbait for real Clickbait, boo on clickbait, <laughs> boo. Princess Bride, that's another good one. Boo, boo. Yeah. Queen of filth. <laughs> <laughs> Queen of refuge. Anyway. Aww, eighties movies. 
Yeah, that's a great movie. Carrie Elwes is in Stranger Things 3 as well. Who's, you know, the Dread Pilot, Pirate Roberts, and Wesley. Um, speaking of Lion King coming, we kind of talked about it a little bit uh, last week. Like the remake deal. Go back and watch that episode. Um, but, I mean, just to kind of like reiterate what we were saying is like, like Lydia said, nobody asked for these remakes. Nobody wanted this. Like, we love the original. Stop messing with it. Like, they, it is rotten. Is it? It is rotten. It uh, is like, uh, I want to say it's like, it's it's down in the like low 50s or something like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's the critic reviews. Of course, some people are saying, so, uh, I was uh, confused by that because uh, from what I was seeing in gen the general consensus, of course, you know, they've got certain things that when they roll out like uh, you know nothing you can't say anything until like an embargo like you can't say anything until this date and then the press is is able to say like you know limited uh, thoughts on twitter and then there's uh, then it goes to, as the movie gets closer then the tomato mirror reveal and then they're able to actually publish their reviews and that kind of thing mm -hmm. that way they don't hurt the chances of the film or whatever because sometimes, I mean, like, you know, you get sleeper hits that bomb in the box office and then audiences finally see and they love, you know, like The Matrix, you know, it was mm -hmm. too complicated in the theaters and it bombed. Boy. Yeah, which is huge now. Matrix is 20 years old? I think Matrix is 20 years old. Today. Older than that. Yeah, it was probably like 97 so yeah, yeah. One of the Matrix. Somebody is twenty years old today. That trilogy. <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Just putting that out there. Um, but I know a lot of people have already bought their tickets to go see Lion King. I mean, I'm gonna go see it. It's gonna take take oh, yeah. my money. So yeah. One of the one of the <laughs> biggest complaints I'm seeing is that you you're hearing animated voices. Like the voice, uh, there's as far as I could tell, there was zero complaints from the voice acting. Like it was all phenomenal. But the problem was a disconnect when now you're looking at photorealistic cats, big cats, who cannot make animated expressions. Oh, like that. Yeah. Is... yeah, exactly. And, uh, okay. and some people are upset, like, be prepared was, uh, I mean, they do other songs in the in the movie, but "Be Prepared" was like shortened to like a little poem esque type thing. Uh, Scar, so some people were upset about that. I Which, listen to "Be Prepared" on the way over here, just because that's my favorite song. It's a great song, and there's so many things that are relevant nowadays. Where it's like the references to the Nazis in the first yeah. one. You know, they kind of they could have really played His off. His teeth that. and ambitions are bare, so be prepared. Yep, yep, yep. Maybe they were trying to keep Scar more threatening in this one. I don't know. Anyways. I feel like he was pretty threatening. He literally... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nazi hyenas. <laughs> I'd be threatened. Yeah. I was. And I still am. All right. So, I guess... Yeah. What's that? Yep. That. Top three in pop culture this week, according to us, <laughs> is... Uh, this is what you should not miss. It, well, number one, we have some more Star Wars information. Yes. Mostly because of the picture of Captain Cardinal. <laughs> <laughs> Which it's, it was the first red bad guy in the series, I think, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so a picture of the newest Stormtrooper, the Sith Trooper, dropped... Last early this early, week, yeah. Or late last week, yeah, early last this week. week, mid last week maybe. It yeah, because I posted a, a photo, a picture on Instagram saying that I really want to talk about it, and if I didn't get a chance, maybe we, I'd try to push it to into this show. So here we are, number one, <laughs> number one, <laughs> super what? Star Wars fan. Did you read the article that went along with it? I did not. So I, I have, I have nothing but my speculation. Okay, <laughs> let's sit with your speculations first. So I, I know for I know uh, just from watching videos and what other people were saying, like if you look at it from the front, it looks like the new troopers. If you look at it from the side, it looks like the old troopers. So it's kind of like a this of amalgamation of you know. Okay. And I don't know if that is stylistically on purpose. I mean, it obviously seems like it's on purpose rather yeah. than just looking cool. But um, so this goes deep, and I. 
um, uh, like Mike Zero, on who covers Star Wars on YouTube, is talking about a lot of stuff. And then uh, Denim Nerds, uh, I got to shout out to those two guys because uh, that's where I got a lot of this from. Uh, and it was just really interesting. And I don't know how much, this is all speculation and fan theory. And so none of this is necessarily confirmed, uh, except for one thing I heard from Mike Zero this morning that, well, it might not be confirmed, but it's it's rumors from people on set saying, it, get ready, because spoilers, you've been warned, remember? So the old man warned you. That's right. <laughs> old man Quinn. <laughs> so the the new thing this morning is that there is a supposedly a scene with Luke Skywalker. And and we we knew that he was probably gonna come back as a force ghost and stuff like that because Ray still needs training. Uh, even though Ray doesn't get training really. I mean, she trains herself apparently. She says good, I guess. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different thing that we we probably gonna get into in later yes. not episodes, but later on in the show. So um so yeah, yeah. So apparently he is on set, but uh and he's on a green screen, and you know, we've seen the photos of the big fight between Ray and Kylo, and uh supposedly that is the big fight, and um uh, I am going blank on the actress's name. Daisy Ridley uh, has has been uh, very excited talking about how epic this big fight at the end is, it, and uh, and it doesn't seem like hype. It seems like she's genuinely excited. Just like it was challenging. It was this. It was that. And um, so apparently there like there's rumors that that during that big scene there's going to be these flash. It's, they're calling it a flash fight or whatever because there are rumors that during this scene um, they're going to be because well because episode nine is supposed to tie all of the episodes in the entire Skywalker saga saga and um, and and put a big bow on it and in the Skywalker saga and it's supposed to harken back to all this so this flash fight is supposed to take. Uh, Kylo and Rey through these moments throughout the past. And it's like the force leading them through these moments type thing. Quinn's getting, I don't, I don't know what that face is about. But supposedly like the big, like the force is supposed to make a big presence in this. And I mean, usually the force is like this, un, it's really vague thing, but apparently it's, it's like, it's almost like Kylo represents the evil, the dark side of the force, like, and then Rey is the light side. That's why she's so powerful and all this stuff. But it, it's like, it's supposed to be the force trying to balance because, and this goes deep into the theory because, you know, we heard uh, Palpatine's laugh at the end of the trailer. And, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm jumping around. I'm jumping around. The the thing I heard this morning about Luke Skywalker, there's a green screen scene that is supposed to take place where uh, in that fight where Luke shows up and he is not a force ghost based on some past rejected uh, idea that George Lucas had and where uh, whether temporarily or or permanently, we don't know, Luke comes back to life. And he has beaten death, which is like, you know, uh, Darth, Pl Darth Plagueis, you know, had beaten death and, and, and there, you know, he was there reading all these ancient Jedi texts and maybe he's figured it out or something, but that is also possibly how we're getting Palpatine back, you know, because Darth Plagueis the wise he, that he was telling Anakin, you know, and, and Plagueis was his master, right? So he beat Plagueis, so it's, it, but that's where I'm confused is because if Plagueis could beat death, then where's Plagueis? <laughs> yeah, where's Plagueis anyway, now? Yeah. Uh, um, so, and, and does the Emperor know Plagueis' secrets? Yeah. So the, the, the theory is these Sith troopers are not Kylo Ren's troopers. Maybe they start in the First Order as them trying to re up, you know, and, and beef up their forces. But, uh, when at, and during, uh, 
the during the last Jedi, Kylo was telling Rey it all needs to die, and he even mentions the Sith needs to die. So Kylo is part of the Knights of Ren. He's the master of the Knights of Ren, which did not make an appearance last movie, but were a big Whatever thing in the one before. Um, and the Knights of Ren apparently are a big thing in this one coming up, uh, Rise of Skywalker. So it the theory is that the the Knights of Ren and they're they're not Sith. But even um, Snoke talked about Kylo completing his training and all that kind of stuff, it, which seems like maybe then he might step into becoming a Sith. And even in like uh, uh, the other things, there were like Sith uh, apologists, you know, who were not Sith, but they fought for the Sith, who were uh, force sensitive and used lightsabers and stuff like that in the cartoons and things like and uh, other stories. So there, he's along that lines, those lines, and right now, him and General Hux are over the First Order, is where we left it. But supposedly there's going to be a time jump, and these are all theories, this is just people putting speculation together based on these Sith Troopers, because there's, there's never been Sith Troopers. You know, I mean, they, and when Palpatine was Emperor, he wasn't out as... A Sith Lord, you know, but now it seems like, oh, he's just, and it seems like towards the end of his life, he became uh, more uh, like based on the books and stuff like that. He became kind of uh, disgruntled at the empire or the empire not being thankful for everything he'd done and all this kind of stuff. And that this time around, he's coming back and he is out in the open. He's out of the closet <laughs> and, uh, and his troopers are Sith troopers. They may be even force sensitive. They may be even clones of Anakin or or Kylo or or somebody that's force sensitive, and so they're going to have to take on an army of force sensitive troopers. And I mean, this is all speculation. This is craziness. But uh, the Ky but Kylo is is he's got mixed feelings about the Sith, about the dark, whatever. He wants to be in control of the galaxy. Obviously, he's trying to make this his thing, the First Order his thing, but of course Hux is loyal to who, there is no Supreme Commander except for maybe Kylo who's trying to position himself, it seemed like at the end of the last movie, as he's a Supreme Commander. Do against the wall, that's yeah. So, uh, it looks like maybe over this time, he, Kylo has kind of, this has become his thing but Palpatine in past editions or whatever has talked about a um, a uh, a proposition or not a proposition a backup plan basically if the empire were to fail or to turn away from him or order whatever 67. order 67 is what it's called okay uh i they kept calling it something else but i can't remember it's like a p word or something uh yeah it's like a backup plan or whatever so yeah so then it seems like it, the theory goes is that Kylo has things going his way and, and of course Rey is still fighting him because she's a rebel and they're, you know, he's trying to take over the, the galaxy, but, or, or whatever, he's in charge and he's trying to do his own thing. But then the emperor comes back on the scene and is like, that's not the plan. Here's the backup and, and, and institutes his plan comes back and then everybody turns on Kylo because they're loyal to the emperor. And that's where you get the Sith troopers, and and then so Kylo, and then Emperor kind of humiliates Kylo, and it's like shows him every or tells him how he's uh, manipulated the Skywalkers all throughout the series, and he's just a just a puppet, and he's nothing, and all this stuff, and even Darth Vader was his was the Emperor's puppet, and all this kind of stuff, and just basically humiliates him, and he has a moment of clarity and is like, I am an idiot. <laughs> and so him and Ray team up to defeat the emperor. Okay. And that's where like we get these uh, set photos of them on a planet that shows the Death Star like sunken, you know, <laughs> and that's where the emperor has been hiding out or whatever. And then maybe even Snoke was his agent to institute this and kind of that he's been pulling strings in the background this entire time. Not Snoke, but the Emperor pulling um, Snoke's strings. 
Snoke seems like he's more powerful than he ever was. But then again, everybody in the new movies seem like they were just the most powerful things ever. Yeah. But, um, so first thing, literally, <laughs> the, 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 it being balanced and there being one that represents the dark and one that represents the light. That's like, so in like Star Wars, Clone Wars, Star Wars, Rebels, all like those two TV shows, like there's a whole little story arc that follows that real super heavy. Really? Like uh, in Star Wars Clone Wars, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka, they go to this very distant like sliver dimension in time that exists outside of time and space where the father of the force who Anakin's supposed to take the place of hmm. and his two children his son who represented darkness and his daughter who represented like pure light really and they so Luke is supposed to represent darkness um one of them yeah I guess like there always has to be a balance and right. sorry yeah that that's that's why uh I forgot I'm sorry that ties into the theory says the reason the force shows up and tries to put balance is because what the emperor is trying to do by wiping out the light side is not balance. It is a unnatural thing. And so the force shows up to bring of, of good and bad to bring balance back and yeah. defeat the, the unnatural foe. Yep. And then them like Luke coming back and can showing up star Wars rebels. They introduced time travel. Mm -hmm. like, there's theories like like will this one have time travel and there's theories that anakin is going to show up too they didn't destroy because they didn't destroy that little the thing they didn't destroy the planet or the tomb it did get buried but it didn't get destroyed of where like the time mirrors were that they could go through and you can if you can use the force you can go in there reach in pull somebody out mm. and i'm pretty sure that wasn't probably the only one like the only place that they could go to do that, uh, and it would make you know, you know how J.J. Abrams loves to play with time, so and yeah, wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, Ian McGregor. Is that his name? I don't want to say it wrong. Yeah, supposedly yeah. they're filming Kenobi right now, and there's there are rumors that that Hayden Christian Hayden Christian Hayden Christensen, who uh, fans have kind of warmed up to over the past few years, like kind of. Because you know his wooden performance or whatever, you know that there's were still a lot of haters of the prequels, who but they've come around now with especially with with uh, the Last Jedi being like the worst yeah, <laughs> that like, they can rally around. Uh, so he's sorry. been he's been making uh, more of a presence in the fan with the fans and showing up at events and stuff like that. And so people are saying, well, he's probably going to show up in the movies, whether it be Kenobi or The Last Skywalker. Yeah. So, I mean... As a Force Ghost, at least. Yeah. That would that'd be fine. But what was, what was, what was the other thing? I can't, yeah, I was, I was so, kind of hoping he was going to show up and be like, Kylo, what are you doing? You're worshipping my, my you, darkness. <laughs> like, stop, dude. <laughs> have you heard what... Uh, the what the idea was for him to show up in the first the force awakens no okay so originally in the force awakens like he when kyle ran's up there like what should i do like a force ghost anakin would show up and like talk to him and everything and like kyle ran thinking about the light and then when kyle ran starts like starts leaning back towards the darkness anakin will start like burning up and burning away and like his skin would like flail back wow. and then it would turn to vader's mask and like it'd be a Sith ghost, huh? Because didn't you say that there hasn't been a Sith ghost, or recently there was introduced a Sith? Sith there was intro. There's like Sith ghosts are a thing, but mm. they work differently than f like Jedi's Force ghosts. Mm. Like Sith ghosts, they are you. They're really like maleficent, evil things, and they usually try to prey on someone's mind. Like they show up in like points of time that you're weak and not to like build you up but like they'll just go into your dreams and like terrorize you there. basically demons yeah wow so how i'm confused as to like how how i mean i get their balance or whatever maybe that that maybe that's the explanation but like how could a force ghost of anakin 
be a Sith at the same time. Because him and Vader were technically two different people. If you want to get super technical, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they, like, like they're both there, and they're still both one, but they're separate. And or it wasn't like Anakin showing up; it was Pelagus or Sidious hmm. playing with them. Hmm. Yeah, and Sidious is the Emperor. Yeah, it's in case you don't know. I know you probably got lost if if you're not into Star Wars stuff. And then what was the other thing? Oh yeah. Clones are a super thing. Like they love clones in Star Wars. Yeah. Like yeah, we have. I've said it like several times in several different places. Ray's probably a clone. Potentially, um, yeah. But uh, if Sidious is still alive, if he doesn't come back from time travel, he's probably a clone. Like they're they love clones and they love trying to make Force clones. Mm -hmm. They literally did it in two little TV show shorts and a whole video game and a yeah. movie. Yeah. So the, yeah, the entire prequel is about. I mean, all the stormtroopers up until uh, the originals yeah. on the timeline. Anyway. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, very much. And there are also rumors that um, uh, Ray. Like that, that J.J. Abrams is retconning Ray's origin story. You know that because it they, it was kind of left open that Kylo could be lying to her to get what he wants out of her, saying that her parents were nobodies. Even even though it seemed to kind of confirm what he said when the little kid pulled the broom or whatever, which is a whole different thing into itself. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, but. With that being left open enough to interpretation, J.J. Abrams apparently, r according to rumors, is going to retcon that and say she is somebody of importance. She has an Im important last name, whether it is Skywalker, Kenobi, Palpatine, or... Clark. Yeah. Gone? Gets gone? Oh, wait, Jin? no. Jen. <laughs> Jen, it would be Jen. Okay. Or what's Yoda's last name? He's like Madonna. He didn't have <laughs> <name>. That's his last name. Yeah. Have last name. That was that was horrible. I did not. I was not. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> have last name. I can't even say it. Have no last name, do I? <laughs> okay. Anyways, sorry. Um, what was <laughs> I the... actually played Yoda in a play once, and I can't do it right now. <laughs> What was the last part? Oh, the Sith Troopers, I'm pretty sure they're going to be Force sensitive because all of the Royal Guard, even in the prequel, mm -hmm. like uh, their little staff, they were just lightsaber staffs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you've got the the Emperor's Royal Guard, like the long sheet looking guys with the yeah, dome the, heads. The helmet, yep. mm -hmm. Yeah, from the originals. And then in the new one, the last one, you've got, you know, in Those his big, you know, Wizard of Oz room. Yeah. <laughs> the guys that were fighting that and the missing knife and all that. Yeah. Had a chain saber sword. Yeah. That, went... <laughs> I, that, that was actually like, I mean, we'll get into this later, but that was actually one of my favorite parts in the movie. And I recently watched a YouTube video that, that showed all the flaws in it. And now I, I'll never see it the same. I was just like, oh my gosh, it was horrible. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah, because I do. I mean, I'm a fanboy. I get caught up in like the wowness of things, you know. Cool without stuff happens. yeah, because there's a balance. You you can do still do wow and still do good plot and story underneath. Balance. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. So yeah, the the Ray thing. Apparently, her her last name is going to be a thing, and then after a certain point after the movie is released, they're going to start putting her last name on everything. <laughs> and that's going to be a major selling point for products okay. going forward. So, Ray Kenobi coming soon. Yeah, Rise of Skywalker. Who is the Skywalker? Who is it? Is it Ray? Is Finn a secret Skywalker? Boy, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's black, but I mean, let's do he, it. Is he a clone? Is he? Uh, I mean, he's is he? He's he could sister. have a white mama or a he white daddy. He could be I mean, a Windu, and we just not know. Oh my goodness! Please let that happen. Oh my gosh! Please, yes. That would mean that Mace was like having a little thing on the side. But hey, I mean, he, he does have one a bad brother, mama, mother. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So. Oh, that I would love that. That would be so good. Like, thank you for that. Now. I'm like so excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's like the next generation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. See, I'm fan of, fan of, fanboying out right now. Anyways. All right. Well, and now number two, we have a new 007 we that do. I didn't think was real and saw it everywhere. So it's. I had the same reaction. I thought it was just like, because you see these these Twitter things pop up, you know, it's like, uh, we got it covered or there's some of these other ones that are just like pro pro propelling these theories out there that like I saw one that was like, uh, it was, it was, we got it covered.com that some of it looks legit and some of it doesn't. <clears throat> it was saying that, Oh, the new remake is Atlantis. The new Disney remake is Atlantis and Guillermo del Toro might direct, which sounds amazing. Sounds and like I get excited for it because, my heart. yeah, but Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro retweeted it and said, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> this is not true. So um, thanks for the clarity, Guillermo, <clears throat> thank um, you. you broke uh, our hearts, but I love <laughs> still your other TV shows on Netflix. <laughs> yes. And just in general, he's, a, a, yeah. I, I love his style and his point of view and his storytelling. Um, one of my favorite directors. So, yes, this one seemed like that at first because it was just like, what? That's <laughs> out of the blue because, Super out like, I blue. mean, it, was, it wasn't even like two, three weeks ago, Idris Elba had an interview where he, or, or a write-up or an interview came out where he was uh, talking about how upset it made him that people were hung up on him not becoming James, Dub Bond. James Bond because he's black. <laughs> you know and then and, and i'm i'm torn on it because i love idris elba and he's a strong british male which yeah. it fits it fits 007 skin color or not i mean he could pull it off at first like i mean part of me is like i mean go back and watch our thing last week you know with uh you know, where we talk about uh, the Disney remakes and all that, what's going in and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, part of me is like, okay, is this is a, this is a British, he's British. Yeah, but, he's British. But this is a, a traditionally white British misogynist character who is uh, for dudes. Like this yeah. is, this is a movie for dudes to go see, have beers and talk about the hot women and <laughs> the fast cars and the gadgets and like this is a movie for dudes and now we've got a, not not only a black 007 which was why idris elba couldn't be 007 so i don't get that part uh but oh, a female yeah. 007 so it's like are we so let's let's talk about the pros and cons so that we don't get into rant territory. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of what this means for 007. Uh Lashana Lynch who was in uh, all I know, I mean this might just be this might, might just show my limited my limited uh uh bias or point of view, but the only thing I know her from is from Captain Marvel <laughs> and uh where she played the best friend and she did a good job. I liked her in that. She looks like she could be Don Cheadle's sister. So she is actually British. She's British. She that British. was a question that I had because okay. if she is not British, well, I mean, I don't know. Spider-Man's British. So I feel like she has to be like, British. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like everything. Spider-Man owns... and Superman are both British. So, I mean, if we cast uh, 007 as an American, I would say, thank you. Finally got one back. But, <laughs> <laughs> Even Rick Grimes is British. He is. That blue. Like, literally the number of British actors that's on The Walking Dead blew my mind the first yeah, time. Lenny like, James. And it's like all the geez. good ones. So it's just like, you can't argue with it. They're just so good, you can't argue with them. She hasn't really been in, like, a lot. Like, really, the only thing I've seen her in is actually Captain Marvel. Yeah. Uh, Bond 25 is what Jan the new James Bond is being called at the yeah. moment. So, so, I mean... I have questions. I mean, I, I, this has been a, a really uh, busy week for me, so I did not get a chance to read the articles about it. All I know is that it, it's a real thing, and she's actually cast as 007. So, is she going to be Jane Bond? Because I know there was talk of that. Um, so, do you want to talk about the pros or the cons first, or or kind of mix it up? Let's kind of mix it. 
Okay. Let's yeah, let's mix it up. So let's let's do a, a con first. So what's a con that you have? One of the cons I have is that, of course, this is the obvious one. It's pandering. A cup, uh, you know, uh, right on the heels of the Little Mermaid. Uh, you know, there was a there was a small, from what I could tell, there was a small, very vocal minority that did not that was upset about the Little Mermaid casting, and. And from what I could see on Twitter, on Twitter is a cesspool sometimes. If you had anything other than support for the Holly uh, Bailey, I, I keep wanting to say Holly Berry, but it's Holly Bailey. Um, and a lot of people were like, Holly Bailey, Holly Berry is the new one. Wow, <laughs> she is really killing it right now. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, if you if you had anything other than support for her, you were you were a racist. Sorry, I just bumped the mic really, really hard. But like, that's what I don't like is if you question, you, you're a racist. Like you're automatically against it or why should you even question? Like, I don't agree with like, I don't agree with that. If somebody has a question, it's, you. I mean, it's worth, it's worth answering, you know? Yeah. Like you're supposed to question. You're supposed to question things. Don't just blindly accept things no matter what, team they're playing for or whatever you should always question question authority question choices decisions that doesn't necessarily mean challenge no that just means question it's like what are your motives what are what is the purpose help me get on board you know whatever is this wrong is this right you know so to me this seems like some pandering especially on the heels of that where it came out of the blue and then you've got all the memes that were, uh, oh, you don't like Little Mermaid? We're going to do this now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it shows like every movie down to Lord of the, Ring, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> as as uh, black recasting. Blame, so look at my ring. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this seems like pandering without diving deeper. On the surface, it seems like pandering. Not only to the black community, but also to the female community. Because it's a double reversal, you know. You're not yeah. just not, not just, just changing the race. race you're also changing, changing the gender. gender. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of feel the same way. I don't know what what's the like why I don't get why what's the point of it. Like there there being you know just a black James Bond that's fine, but I kind of get why who is James Bond doesn't matter because it's kind of like batman like no one not everybody knows that batman's bruce wayne they just know that batman is batman mm -hmm. and like no matter who's wearing who is wearing the cow if they got that bat on their chest and they look like batman no matter what the color of their chin is yeah. they're batman it's a symbol mm -hmm. which is kind of what james bond is but based off of all of the other movies the, the dynamic of this movie is gonna be really different like that's that's another con i guess the dynamic of the movie is definitely gonna change unless she's just gonna be a lesbian or she's gonna be a bond dudes now and she's just gonna be manizing well what's the opposite okay womanize trans what's, oh uh what's the opposite of womanize but it's for dudes I don't know. Manazize? Uh, Manazize. Uh, Manhunter, man eater. <laughs> um, no, she's a man eater. Okay. <laughs> but she's just gonna like womanize dudes now. So, and, that, and that's yeah. like the movie's gonna be different. Like the, ac the action, that's fine. You can have action movies with. Uh, ladies in a Atomic Blonde. I love that movie. Yeah, and yeah, like all sorts of movies like that. Uh, but that, that's one of the movies that, like, on the first watching, I was like, "There, I have some issues." But then after thinking about it, it was like, it just makes so much sense. <laughs> like, oh my gosh! Like, Charlize Theron is a genius. Yeah. <laughs> Like, cause like, I, I, yeah, her accent throughout the thing, I was like, it's inconsistent. And then I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, a pro it's going to reach a new audience probably. Like it might, it might end up being the most popular James Bond movie ever. 
like just because movies that have controversy around it like this and we even said last week mm-hmm. uh, example we gave last week was beauty and the beast because of a uh, gaston's little buddy who was gay yeah can't remember his name uh ended up you know that made the movie probably one of Over disney a billion dollars yeah billion dollars so it could do something like that, or it could just tank, and they realize, oh, I'm sorry. Like Ghostbusters. Like Ghostbusters. But, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so, I mean, that that is a big shift and divide right now in Hollywood, because, and then, like I was saying last week, it's inconsistent. Like, what, it, what are the rules for this new paradigm? Like, yes, we want to show... Uh, more representation. We're on board with that. We want to cast uh, people as their actual genders or their actual, not genders, their actual races. You know, we don't want to take away from that. That's, I don't like that. I want people to be who they are. But at the same time, what's o- what's okay to change and what's not okay to change? You know, where you've got like Scarlett uh, Johansson was, was uh, the fans booted her out of this trans role. Uh, tug, oh, rub and tug. Oh, yeah. And she recently was, you know, there was some controversy about some comments that she made, and she cl- clarified. Um, but you know, saying that you know they should be casting a trans uh, Person. actress yeah. or actor or, or they. I don't, I don't know how that works. I'm not up on that. I'm a middle aged white dude, <laughs> so <laughs> that lives in middle America. <laughs> so I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I think some of the pro or a pro for this is that 007, the headlines I saw didn't say that she was going to be the new James Bond outside of she's the new 007. So 007 is a name. It's a code name that could transfer to anyone. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the pro is that you could open up that door and expand on that world in that way. And that could be exciting as, as long as you don't give the middle finger to the fan base, like the go, like ghostbusters did, you know, because it, you know, like I said, it seemed like pandering and almost like, oh yeah, well, if you don't like it, then there, you know, yeah. and you never want to, I mean, Back you don't disrespect fans. the fan base because not because we're, and we're going to talk about toxic fandom and stuff here in a little bit, but uh, the, the, the whole reason for that franchise to exist is the fan base. Yeah. If you want to do something new, go do something new. If you if you have run out of ideas uh, to bring to that franchise and you don't know what else to do with that franchise, let it go. G- move on. Do something new. That's how we got those franchises in the first place. Original content. Uh, So, I mean, this is a mixed bag, I guess, with the pros and cons. But uh, like you you mentioned, Atomic Blonde. There are some very, very good uh, female spy spy thrillers. Yeah. You know, action movies, female spies. Like, there are some great ones. Turn some of those into franchises. You know, make it something, you know, and... I know that pe- that Hollywood is scared of something new and tentpole pictures unless it's based on it's got a built-in fan base or whatever because of people's jobs and it's shaky and it's unsure and all these I get that but you've got to take risks to make otherwise you're just going to keep churning out remakes and all this crap yeah. I mean, even Disney right now Literally. like everybody's just like what the heck Disney Remaking you you've got all the catalog. cards in your hand and you you're f- afraid of taking risks you have literally all the money and you're going to have all the more money when yeah. you get Disney Plus come out. Yeah. So Yeah, Marvel seems to be the only wing of Disney that's taking risks right now. And and people are loving it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're changing characters who've been around for a long time. They're changing, they're keeping the essence the same of the character and they and they're they're recasting, they're they're changing them up like I mean and, and not everybody agrees. I mean, Lou Ferrigno came out recently and said that he just can't, still can't get into Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk. <laughs> you know, like it's hard. And so, I mean, not everybody's going to agree, but there are many people who love Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk. 
you know, and some people still hate Professor Hulk because he was useless or this or that, whatever. But I mean, there nobody. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'm getting into the toxic fandom thing. I'm, I'll I'll stay that argument until later. So, 007, Lashana Lynch. I don't know enough about Lashana Lynch to know that she could carry a franchise this huge. I know that they have had issues with James Bond, with the rights going back and forth from the family and and where it's going to land. And, and even re recently, uh, Daniel Craig having injuries and things happening on set where they're having to stop. And uh, but this storyline that they've been going with Bond is is going towards his retirement, like he's done. So that could potentially shift into introducing her at the end of this movie, you know, which would yeah. be wise instead yeah. of just jumping right in. You know, you people are going to go see this one because it's the last Bond movie, you know, whatever, quote unquote. Uh, but not the last 007. Exactly. So. Uh, yeah yeah exactly so uh if they were to introduce her at the end and for him to like give a nod to her and and then you know pass the torch that would be the wise thing to do and to get people on board rather than waiting and then and then trying to introduce people to something that they're not going to go show up for in the first place you know mm -hmm. what i mean so that that's what you run into when you you're dis the the fans take it as disrespect so you've you've got to be careful with that and and we're going to get into that later but this is one of those things it's like you've got to really make sure that you've got the fan base on board because if you don't have them on board then you're making movies in a vacuum yeah it's not going to do anything for you it's going to stagnate and then you're going to just kill something that everybody loved mm-hmm yeah, and, and people are going to be so disappointed because they watched it go out with a fizzle rather than a bang. And they feel like injustice to their one of their favorite characters. I mean, this James Bond has been going on for, what, 30, 40 years? A long, for, for a long, long Back time. Back when Sean Connery <clears throat> was tall and had a head full of black hair. Yeah. <laughs> so. And even then, he wasn't classically a British actor. He was Scottish. Yeah. And one of he the best bonds. backhand women a lot. I watched, uh, yeah, and, what yeah, was Bond it? has progressed a lot. Yeah, he has progressed a lot. <laughs> I was like, <clears throat> uh, I was watching it. What was I watching? It was uh, Octopussy. That's the name of that. The, yeah. the, the names of these movies have gotten better as well. Yeah. He just like smooth slapped a woman. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is, this is real. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, are they out of ideas? I don't know. Is this something good? Is it something bad? The verdict is still out. I mean, I'm trying not to get into my personal feelings. I'm trying to look at it as, as pros and cons. Do you have any pros? Um, Other than then this could be, then it's a symbol, you know? Um, other pros. It could... Mm, it could open the doors for a Bond universe as well. Ooh, that yeah. could be interesting. That could be yeah. exciting. And and by doing this double reversal, it, it might not be a negative thing. It might open the door to bring in a whole other group of people who were not interested in Bond because of yeah. the male, white male chauvinistic thing that it, it has been attached to James Bond for so long. Yeah. And he, I mean, white dude, middle-aged white dudes like me show up for Atomic Blonde. So if you do, if you play your cards right and yep. you, you transition this well, wisely, yeah. you could really, really double down and blow this up in a good way. Yeah. So it could be exciting. That's why I'm reserving judgment. I want to see what they're going to do because if they come at it in a petty Oh, we're sick of the racists. We're sick of this. We're sick of that type thing. You're already you're 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 basically saying uh, you're you're name calling all the fan base. You know yeah. what I mean? Like in in things that that aren't necessary aren't true in a blanket statement. Yeah, there's probably some racists racists racists, some white chauvinists, some 
you know, male chauvinists. There are definitely some of those in the fan base. Yes. Is everyone in the fan base that? Absolutely not. So that's where you don't want to group those people together because I don't want to be associated with that. And I love James Bond. You know, there are mm -hmm. certain things that I overlook. Yeah. Do yes. I not watch the old ones? Not really. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but I mean, I love the new James Bond. We had a uh, a marathon a couple years back when the last one came out with my son and, and uh, Lydia, who'd never seen a James Bond, and we loved them. What was the last one's name? It's not the Phantom Thread. That's Skyfall. It. No, it wasn't Skyfall. It was... No. Um, yeah. Spectre. Spectre. There we go. Has yeah. he done four? Dale Craig done four? Yeah. Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, uh, Skyfall, Fall. Spectre. Yep. Yeah. 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 And he was going to quit like twice already. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, yeah. And, and even like in every single time they cast somebody new, even Daniel Craig, everybody's like, oh, he's too blonde to be. <laughs> what? what? Yeah. What? And he's turned out to be one of the best Bonds, yeah. you know? So we'll see. I mean, people are always critical up front, but give them a reason not to be critical. Don't play into that. And play your cards well, and this could be good. So, I'm excited for Lashana Lynch. This is a huge opportunity for her. Yeah. Huge. Super is. It's you know, I'm career... not to downplay anything she's done in the past and no. say, oh, well, this is going to make her or anything like that. It's but career defining. It could, she, yeah, it she, could be. She's made herself, but now it's like, this is my legacy. Yeah, this yeah. this you step into legacy with this. Even though she is a Marvel character, she's she's opening the door to that with this Marvel character, Photon, and the daughter and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. Captain Marvel. So, all right, could be good. Could be good. And now, number three, last but certainly not least, this is such an ongoing issue. I don't think this is ever going to go away. Probably not. But it's uh, kind of it's fan complaints versus toxic fandom so like when we say that you know fan complaints like people writing in letters and things like that of like we'll just use stranger things because that's the one that's on top of my head uh of like them smoking in movies and everything or not in smoking in the show mm -hmm. a lot but you know they're trying to keep it as the way it was it's it was the 80s. People smoked. We didn't know. Yeah, that, that, that is a period piece. Yeah. Like, I mean, everybody and their mama smoked. I mean, I remember in the 90s, uh, high schools had smoking sections. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, you could get, a, you could get a, a pass signed by your parents, and you could go smoke in the smoking section at the high school. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a thing. And it was common. <laughs> It was like, now you'll be lucky to get a tree off campus for <laughs> yeah. people who actually work there. <laughs> you pretty, know? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's the smoking tree way over there. <laughs> but it's a mile down the road. We know. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> or vape. Um, and then... That's an example of fan complaints, but then Toxic Fandom is like the folks who get on there and be like you should die because we hate your character that's not real and in space die mm -hmm. pretty much yeah but yeah. so yeah the way i i the way i see it uh even george r, r. martin has come out recently saying that toxic fandom kind of screwed up season eight of of, of, game, of game of thrones, thrones or whatever and i disagree to a certain extent um <laughs> Yes, uh, social media and the internet has given a platform to trolls. There, the, no doubt, there are trolls. Yeah. Like what I talked about earlier in this episode, Spider-Man Two or Two: Far From Home. Spider-Man Three Spider -Man. Part Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colons. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen the movie, and it's this is only its second week in the box office and I know everything that happened because people and their clickbait titles just from scrolling yeah. like just that is scrolling. trolling that is trolling you're spoiling it you're ruining it for other people yeah if you want to have a discussion and disagree that's fine but to put it out there that that and that is the media 
doing that. That is people on you, people on YouTube are not really media necessarily, but, uh, that is that those are people that, those are not just necessarily just like normal folks. You yeah. know what I mean? Those are people who have channels, who have followers, who are part of the, the new media, I guess I should say, um, <clears throat> who are, who are clickbait titles, Buzzfeed, who is definitely considered media. Yeah. Clickbait titles. Clickbait is trolling. It is trolling. Yes. You can get people to read your stuff without saying, oh, this is who died and here's mm -hmm. why. Yeah. Yeah. And you might not say what happened in your title, but your, your, your thumbnail says it all. You know, it's like, stop, stop. Yep. Hashtag don't be a troll. That is, that is my hashtag. Don't be a troll. Uh, and I've I've said that from uh, the Last Jedi, and yeah. and that was a movie that I despised. <laughs> I I didn't despise it, but I uh, yeah. I mean, the, over so, time I've I've grown to hate it more. <laughs> but I mean, there 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 are some vi visually amazing things about it, but story wise and consist consistency and respect to the universe, respect to the fan base. Story wise, it was not cool. Garbage. <laughs> But and that that is a big one uh, to get into toxic fandom and stuff like that because that is why Lucas I say Lucasfilm Kathleen Kennedy Ryan Johnson why they say <clears throat> they're having issues with they're saying that people are afraid of strong female characters that uh, that it's toxic fandom and that seems to be a blanket excuse. For I don't want to take responsibility for my crappy writing. Because Ryan Johnson on Twitter is classic for calling people snapback assholes, for calling people man babies. Snapback. Yeah. Not saying, hey, you know what, you might have a good point. I may have messed up. You know? I, um Go ahead. Yeah, I mean I mean when you're when you're watching a a uh, a media junket and the star of the franchise looks unhappy and says things in disagreement to the movie and you have to cut him off <laughs> and and then re double down on on your your narrative you've got problems that's not the fan base that's you yeah. that's not the fan base well mark hamill just don't know how to keep his mouth shut Mark Hamill doesn't like his mouth shut. Mark he's Hamill's Mark freaking Hamill. a legend. You don't tell Mark Hamill to keep his mouth shut. Like he's Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> like he is Star Wars. Like there's George Lucas and there's Mark Hamill. Yeah. You know and what I mean? Even George Lucas, like back in the day, he got complaints from parents that let their kids watch Star Wars. Like Han Solo is supposed to be a good guy. He's not supposed to shoot first. And then he did that whole thing of like, you know computer editing that and then he shoots mm -hmm. so i'm like it, like he, people will just like kneel down to it and it's like okay sure fine if that's what will make you give me your money okay mm -hmm. but and then daisy ridley she said in the interview last week that fans have a right to be upset with the last jedi if we're just going to talk about the last jedi mm -hmm. but talk to phantom can like ruin things for everybody yeah uh game I'm sorry, of thrones game oh, of th I, before I, I wanted to touch on uh some star a couple of star wars things just before we move on to a different okay. uh, fandom um <clears throat> toxic examples of toxic fandom uh daisy ridley having to leave twitter because people shouting her down or having to leave social media because people shouting her down i hate your character i hate this i hate that nothing constructive I was like, I didn't like it because this or that. Just say You know, I threats. Think. Like, that is toxic. That is not okay. That is not okay in any scenario, in any situation. You do not threaten people. Oh, still people. Okay? That's not okay. Uh, I forget her name. The, the, the lady that played Rose. Her character, her horribly too. written, unnecessary. Her as a person got death threats, dealt with suicide. That is not okay. No. That is not okay. She took a job, did the best she could with what she was given. With a great opportunity. Yeah. That's not her fault. 
she did what she was supposed to do. With what she had, she did good. She was likable. In if you look at it through that lens, how she did, she did good. Didn't have to make a love pentagon, but she yeah. was good. Yeah, the, the writing, horrible. That's on Ryan Johnson. That's on Kathleen Kennedy. Okay? That is not her. All right. That is toxic fandom. You don't, you're not putting the blame where it belongs and lashing out at people, you know, Charge being rude, friends. being obnoxious, trolling. That is, that is toxic fandom saying you disagree with somebody. That's not toxic. That is, that is constructive. That is a fan base. Fans who love it want to see it do well. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and for you to turn around and say, oh, well, you're just a man, baby, or you're just an asshole, or you're just afraid of strong female character. We're strong. We're afraid of strong female characters. We freaking love Leia. Yeah. We freaking love cool. Sigourney Weaver in Alien. We love the, the other big bad chick with the big gun in Alien. We um, love Atomic Blonde. I mean, how many? Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor. Uh, all going all the way back, Jackie Brown. I mean, I mean, that's what Jackie Brown. I mean, I mean, going back to the seventies, like there are several strong female characters, and yet there's this narrative in Hollywood right now. It's like the first strong female. This it's like, no, it's, no, it's not, you're trying but... to build hype around what you're doing is what you're doing. You're trying to manipulate people. That's not okay. That is toxic, because. You're, it's it's that is that's toxic in a way that it is manipulation because it's like you're trapping people. It's entrapment. You're 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 putting out a narrative, and then when people disagree with it, they're a racist. They're this. They're that. And, and so you're trying to set up a narrative that no one can disagree with without being a bad person, like morally bad because they disagree with you. That is not okay. That's not okay. You know, like people disagree. Yes, there were people who disagreed with the Little Mermaid casting. Yes, there were people who are racist who did not agree with it simply because she was a black girl. Uh, so th that is bad. Yeah. Call out the racists. Appol absolutely. But everybody who disagrees with it or says something that might be slightly negative or questioning to the narrative is not a racist. I mean... It, it, yeah. Am I wrong in that? No. I mean, I'm not trying to use you as like a token <laughs> black fine. guy or anything like that. But, but I mean, it, it, with certain things like that, it it like I really feel and like it's not basically pandering. And with the Little Mermaid, Shay's like the same way. She doesn't really it doesn't settle well with her and she's a black woman that it doesn't settle well with her that the little mermaid's black like she said i get it it's you know black girl magic it's everywhere right now but let the and little it's mermaid exciting. yeah but the little mermaid can be the little mermaid but if not just don't mess it up like if you're gonna do it and like that's gonna be your thing like the thing that you're gonna use to propel this movie forward to everyone is that she is a little mermaid because of this reason then don't mess the movie up because if you mess it up it's just like what was the point pretty much yeah i mean it almost seems like i mean and i know it's not this way every single time but it, it, it's getting to where it's almost like, oh, you're sick and tired of remakes? Oh, well, let's do something new. And this is just the new lazy version of, of let's change it up. You know, woo, let's, you know, let's get this person excited. Like, and all you you're, you're yeah, it's not smart writing. Yeah. It's pandering. It's like, ooh, what, what big uh, gimmick? It's gimmicky is yeah. what it is. And, uh, and I, 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 you know, I, I don't necessarily like it. If, if, if it's, if it's gimmicky, if it's just for the sake of getting people on board, that's not cool. If yeah. it, if you have a legitimate reason, it's like, I have a really great story. If this person is black, this could be great. Like, I want to see that yeah. if this, if this traditionally male character is female, I have a great story to write in from that perspective. I want to see that. Like, what's an odd example? Like, an odd example is uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. Like, 
if you play that game as a dude, no matter what your class is, if you play the game as a guy, it's a good story, but they unsubconsciously or they purposely made the game to be played where the main character is supposed to be female. Because you end up having like a lot more storylines and a lot more everything that, that makes this a better story. Really? Yeah. Like I huh. played the game through as a guy and I was like, oh, this is, it was like really good. And like the main bad guy at the end didn't become my friend, but we were opposite sides. But I played through as a woman. I could fall in love with him. And like that's just a whole nother dynamic to the story. So like. Stories can be made in ways and taken in different perspectives, but if you're doing it just for gimmicky reasons, but you're not trying to like make it work, what's the point? Yeah, it just seems like the lazy thing right now. Instead of coming up with original material, you know, and granted, I get it's, I understand the, the draw. You know, you've got a built-in fan base for this. But if you go in and you say, you know what? I mean, it's it's counterintuitive. It's a catch-22 because you're saying, the reason I'm going to use this is because of the fan base. But then you don't give the fan base what they want. You, you're just doing what you want. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're basically just, you're a wolf in sheep's clothing. And then you get mad when the fan base calls you out as a wolf. Snap back. Yeah, that's, you're, I mean, yeah. I, I don't understand. You, you can't just slap a label on people and say, you know, oh, well, what I did is untouchable. No, nobody's untouchable. No one's untouchable. You know, there, oh, well, all movies have problems. Yeah, but they're not all movies. There are some solid movies. Amazing movies. Years. Godfather, untouchable. That's Godfather crazy. 2, untouchable. Scarface, amazing. I mean, I'm going back to gangster movies, but there are some pretty dang near perfect movies. Pulp Fiction, since we're seeing gangster movies. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, not everybody's going to agree with everything, but you, you can't say screw the fan base. It's like saying, oh, you want ice cream? Like, let's go get ice cream because you want ice cream, and then when we get there... Surprise, it's not ice cream, it's spaghetti. Don't get mad. <laughs> spaghetti. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, how dare you get mad that I brought you to spaghetti? I didn't have to bring you to spaghetti. Well, you told me it was ice cream. <laughs> it's when like, did I say it was ice cream? You're misleading the fans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just it's to like, get them in so you can get that money. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. Huh. <sighs> Well, I think we're both angry enough today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah, the, you mentioned uh, Game of Thrones. I know we got to wrap this up. Game of Thrones, like George R. R. Martin saying the fan base is just out of control. Some of it, yes, absolutely. There, There's no denying that there are trolls. There are crazy people. I mean, like when I posted, I, all, all I did was post the new casting of uh, Holly Bailey uh, for The Little Mermaid. And when I, I, I didn't know who she was because she's relatively new on the scene. Right. And she's young and she's in a band or arm, a band, R&B group. she's an R&B group with her sister who, who is older than her, but she, they look a lot alike. Like I had to look like there's, a, there's a, a yeah, the shape look. of their face is different. And one sister has a mole over her eyebrow. That's the only way I can tell the difference between them. And, and one is taller than the other. Uh, but if you're just pulling up pictures of each one and you're not familiar, I, I couldn't tell at first. Yeah. And so I, I like I kept pulling up sister or, or pictures and it would show both of them together. And I was like, I, I don't it's not both of them that are cast, obviously. So I was trying to pull up a picture of of Hallie. And I, so I went to the Rotten Tomatoes site and it had them mislabeled like they had oh. them mislabeled. And so I pulled the picture thinking that was Hallie. And so I posted the picture of the other sister. I can't remember her name right now. Chloe. Um, next to the Little Mermaid. And I said, Hallie's been cast as a Little Mermaid. Somebody was like, that is Chloe. Delete this post. Not not like, hey, man, I, you know, this isn't the right person. You know, 
Yeah. It's like, delete this post. And it's like, I don't know you from anybody. You just going to show up and tell me what to do with my stuff. It's yeah. like, I'm, I'm putting it out there informational purposes. Yes, I should have done more research and I got in a rush trying to put it out and beat the, beat the thing or whatever. But in fairness, Rotten Tomatoes got it wrong right, too. Wrong. <laughs> and I'm not in any form or fashion as professional or as have, have as many resources or as deep as Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. So if they can mess it up, get off my back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that telling people uh kill yourself delete this post that is toxic nobody should ever if you don't speak to like that, that that to someone if you don't speak like that to someone to their face you shouldn't speak like that online to them if you speak like that to someone in their face hey you're a maniac yeah and you um, should get your face slapped yeah you deserve whatever <laughs> punch is coming your way um but yeah yeah toxic fandom it's been running rampant ever since social media has been like a real thing and people realize oh they can't find me i'm just going to be do this and now yeah and it used to be hate mail and you know people get hate mail you know but sometimes you just got to give things time for people to get used to them you know and then you know like the matrix when it first came out it people didn't understand it will smith turned it down because he didn't understand it and now he takes every sci-fi thing that comes his way <laughs> Because he's worried that he's going to miss out on a big he's one, like, I guess. Oh, gosh, dang uh, it. I'm not going to get another Matrix. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it was a sleeper hit. It took a while for people to get it, understand it, see it a few times, and now it's it's huge. It's genius. It's, it's a, a game changer. Um, so, uh, I mean, you have to respect what came before. And if you want to change it, it ha you have to change it in an interesting way. It's like... I mean, you have to see it as the big picture. It's like, and see it, like, even though it is, uh, like, I think Robot Head or something, uh, one of the YouTubers I was, I was watching on this made a lot of good points. Um, and I reposted on Facebook, but he was saying that, you know, this isn't like the first or second movie in the franchise. This is eight of nine. There's so much established. And for you to just, by the way, like, yeah, of course people are going to get upset. You know, right you're supposed to be end. wrapping up the story, not not saying, hey, yeah. Let's just start a new one, Stamp. Exactly. I mean, wait for your trilogy if you want to change things up. Mm -hmm. Be smart about it. I mean, I'm not saying he's dumb. I'm just saying it's unwise. And it seems like a rookie amateur mistake. And then when people call you out on it, not saying, hey, you know what? I did my best. I misunderstood. I'm sorry. You're gonna ruin uh, it for other I like what directors. I did, but I, I understand that you disagree. Instead of just going, you're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, come on. I'm and not then, 10. Exactly. Yeah. It's not the playground. <sighs> <sighs> All right. Yep. I'm good. <laughs> so, uh, once again, we'd like to say... Uh, thanks for joining us by YouTube and or podcast. If you want to keep the conversation going or support the show, you can, of course, comment below or you can find all that information in the episode notes or at the website at www.broken.picturesno.com. And don't forget that you can leave us a voice message and or questions that we can play on the show. Go to www.anchor.fm slash the FOMO show to talk to us. And YouTube viewers, please like and subscribe. Hit the little bell icon Ding. for new notifications or no, for notifications when we put out new videos, um, which hopefully it's going to be a lot here soon because Comic-Con is right around the corner <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of new information. So many trailers. Yes. So podcast listeners, uh, please leave us five stars in your podcast app. This is Dylan. This is Quinn. And... See you next time. Peace. See you. Bye.